Welcome to Massive Passive Cash Flow, the podcast that guides professionals to financial prosperity. Join our community and let's start building your wealth. Here's your host, Gary Wilson. Welcome back to the Massive Passive Cash Flow podcast. I'm Gary Wilson, your host. I'm so glad to have you back listening to the show. We've got a great guest today, Joe Mendoza from beautiful, sunny Southern California. And it's 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 uh, San Marcos. So if you haven't heard of it, it's inland a little bit from Carlsbad, Oceanside, and and uh, sort of near Escondido. I've been there before myself. Beautiful part of the world and beautiful people. So, Joe, thanks for joining us, man. I, I know you're a busy guy. I, I see what you're doing, and I know how lucky we are to have you on the show. So thank you for doing this. Thank you, sir. I totally appreciate the opportunity, and I'd love to share whatever you want to ask. You got it, man. Well, let's let's give people some real some real meat and potatoes here. I first like to start off, if you don't mind sharing, um, what what brought you to this this business that you're in? Because a lot of us, you know, we're not born saying I'm going to be a real estate agent or an investor. We're like we want to be firemen and policemen and astronauts and stuff. <laughs> so, but uh, was there something inspiring in your life, like a like a relative or a friend that was an investor? I mean, what what kind of triggered or inspired you to get into the business? You know. Sure, absolutely. Thanks so much for asking the question. So my dad was in the Navy and he was first generation over here from the Philippines and he did, he wasn't making a lot of money. And as a child, he would always say, you got to be rich. You got to be rich. You got to be rich. And I had no clue in the world how to get rich. Um, I, I did hear about real estate. Then one day I was at a friend's house and we call him uncle, every Filipino friend, a relative, whatever is an uncle. So my uncle okay. was saying, I got a couple of tickets to this real estate event. You should check it out. And I put the two and two together, you know, real mm -hmm. estate, uh, get rich. Um, so I went and I saw Robert Allen here in sunny San Diego oh, yeah. live. Yeah. And I was about 17 years old. And I was like, this is it. And that kind of was a turning point in my life. Uh, and I started chasing down that uh, that um, venture of real estate. Yeah. yeah he's Robert Allen. He, he's still around. He's still doing his thing. I got to meet him several years ago at a conference. He was a speaker. I was a speaker. He he was a big speaker. I was a little speaker. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I've been I've been wanting to meet him. You know, it's it's uh, one of those things that I definitely want to say thank you uh, because he yeah. truly did inspire me at 17 years old. And and I live by yeah. his model, you know, investing in real estate, pursuing real estate mm -hmm. and his book, multiple streams of income. So yeah, mm -hmm. I have multiple streams of income and I'm, um, I'm passionate about real estate. That's awesome. So, well, let's go ahead and, uh, so stepping forward, you, um, you've learned from, from Robert Allen and I'm sure in between then and now you've probably read other books and maybe taken some training and masterminds and so forth, but you're, what was your first transaction like? Well, by the way, was it a rental or a flip or, uh, you know, kind of share that with us and kind of break it down and give us the, hey, Gary, here's the, here's what the, here were the numbers. Here's the mistakes I made. Here's, you know, real estate is very forgiving, by the way. I always tell people, don't be shy. Give, give us the mistakes. I want people to recognize that you can make a mistake in real estate and still come out okay, you know? Yeah. You so, know, I've got a lot of stories, Gary, uh, for <laughs> my first transaction because, you know, I started, very, very young, very, very early. But the first transaction, um, I could talk about lending. I could talk about brokerage. I could talk about investments, fix and flips, syndications, all of the above. Um, yeah. So yeah. I would just say for your audience, sometimes the first deal uh, is the one you walk away from because sometimes these deals uh -huh. don't work out. And, and And it's better to walk away from a deal than to pursue something that that just doesn't feel right, and then later it burns you in the end. Um, I will say, however, that uh, let's fast forward because you know we're talking about massive passive income. There was a property here in Escondido as a broker that I found on Craigslist, and I I had my assistant uh, kind of research properties for me early morning found this multi-family, actually it was an office uh, building here in Escondido and mm -hmm. I called on it and lo and behold, it was a mom and pop kind of self-managing. They were in retirement, all the, the clues of like, hey, you should buy it. But as a broker, I didn't have that education. 
And so I, and long story mm-hmm. short, I ended up listing the property. Um, mm-hmm. and I had it for six months and the seller originally was like, no, 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 no seller carry. I want ca- all cash out. I want to get out of here. You know, um, I'm highly motivated. I don't want anything to do with any buyers that want a subject to a seller carry. And I was getting towards the end of the six months. And as an agent, I was like super motivated because I wanted that commission. Um, and this one yeah. buyer he kept pushing and pushing and pushing. Hey, Joe, I want to do this transaction, but it's got to be seller carry. And um, you know what? Make it work. And so I talked to the seller. At first, he was no, no, no. Then towards the end, he goes, you know what? Let me take a look. And he, the buyer ended up buying it for $400,000 down with the seller carry back for the rest. It was just under $2 million. It was, um, God, he did the value add. He raised rents. He ran it professionally. And sure enough, he, he did the force appreciation. He created massive passive mm-hmm. income force for himself. Whoopie do. I made about $40,000 under the agent. I mean, yeah, that's good money. But I'll tell yeah. you what, he bought it for about $2 million and his multiple mm-hmm. was about 3x. So if you do the nice. simple math, which side of the table would have I chosen back then? Of course, the investor. Yeah. So, so now, fast forward, um, I'm playing both sides still as a broker, but also I'm really yeah. pursuing more and more as an investor. Yeah. And I appreciate you mentioning that too, by the way, at the end there, because I I was an investor first. And the only reason I got my license show was really because I was frustrated. Most of the agents, wonderful people, but they were not trained to help me as an investor. I had to go to commercial guys for that, but they didn't want to deal with duplexes and flips like I was doing at the time. They wanted, you know, strip malls and, and storage facilities, industrial space. So I thought I'll solve the problem. I'll get my license. That's really why I got my license. But what I discovered was, it's an excellent complimentary, you know, if you want to call it a side hustle or whatever, but a, a complimentary business to investing. The two go hand in hand. And eventually ended up building a, you know, a title business and a property management business and appraisal business. And I just followed the banking model. You know, if you got a client, serve them in many ways that you can, as long as you you can do it, you have the capacity to do it. And uh, and I found out for like from Robert Kiyosaki, another great master, I'm sure you've if study some of his stuff. I got to meet him and took all his programs, read all his books, got to meet him at Lake Tahoe at a conference. It was a men's conference, just a hundred of us guys together, all investors. And he came in and spent the day with us. It was awesome. And I remember telling him, I say, Robert, I just, you know, I, I started off investing. Then I stumbled into building a business just because I saw a need. And then I built these other businesses. And it turns out I'm actually doing better in the businesses than I am in the real estate. I said, I, I thought that real estate would be the end game. You should know if you follow what I teach, it's it's actually the, the cash flow quadrant, right? You got employee, self-employed, then you've got investor and business builder. He said the people that build businesses usually have a lot longer staying power and you can sell your business. You build it and you sell it. You build it, you sell it. And then you can leverage. So you're so the real estate, here's what happened to me, Joe. The real estate actually became a platform upon which I launched other business ventures have you have you kind of found the same thing or uh i, I know you're if you got multiple streams of income how about we talk about that for a minute if you want to sharing um you've got your investing your brokers but what else do you have going on you know absolutely gary so i'm so glad you brought that up and i too am a really big fan of robert kiyosaki as a matter of fact when i read the book in 2001 that was it the cash flow mm-hmm. quadrant moving from the es quadrant to the bi quadrant and I'm heavily mm-hmm. focusing on B and I this phase of my life. So funny that you asked because uh, recently I acquired a franchise. So I, I do have a a magazine franchise I recently acquired. I do have an uh, investment club that I, I do have as my business. I am also in the commercial lending space uh, with my lending business. So um, yeah, so I have multiple streams of incomes, multiple businesses. And I am starting to underwrite businesses for acquisition. So um, one of the things that I read recently, um, a very, very great, great book, by the way, $100 million offers and $100 million leads by Alex Formosi. And he was talking yeah. about like, you know, creating multiple streams of income as well. And, um, you know, buy businesses that have existing cash flow. 
because mm-hmm. starting a business is way harder. You got that ramp up period, which, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? I think it's like 90% of the business that fail within the first five years. And mm-hmm. the, s- the statistics, the odds are truly stacked up against you. And so yeah. I learned the hard way because I'm an entrepreneur by heart. And I was in a bunch of startups, um, some that I did myself or some that I, hey, here's 5,000, here's 10,000, here's 25,000, get your business started, you know, learning the hard way. But now, like I said, this phase of my life, I want to buy existing cash flow, where if there's a business that there's somebody who wants to exit, perhaps a a baby boomer or somebody who just wants to venture off in their next business, uh, one of my relatives, um, he exited uh, four times out of biotechs, and he's done very, very, very well, which has been an inspiration to me. Where like, hey, you know what? Let's let's see how, I, how many times I can do it as well. Uh, buying businesses with existing cash flow that maybe you know they're not selling it because it's going bad. They just want to simply exit and retire. And if the underwriting matches my criteria, by all means, I'll either buy it myself. Uh, raise capital, do creative financing, or or a JB, whatever comes to mind, whatever yeah. works uh, at the time. Yeah, that's so awesome. What's interesting is um, a friend of mine, he's in a restaurant business. He just bought a business brokerage where he can you know help people buy and sell businesses. And, he, and uh, his general manager from the restaurant business uh, uh, is heading that up. He's a CEO, and I'm actually meeting him in about two hours. <laughs> So we we got something cooking that's sort of I'll, I'll I definitely want to talk to you more about that. I know it's this is not the appropriate forum, but um, it's, I'm just I love doing these podcasts because stuff like this comes up. I mean, I get for everybody listening, you know, I'm just a regular person, and I bet Joe here will probably tell you the same thing. We're just regular guys, you know. We, you know, but we do learn. You have to be a learner in this world, and the, the whenever there's a shift in the market, whenever there's some kind of adversity or a change, it's the learners that sees the next day. I call it seizing tomorrow. You know, the learners will be there. You got to step ahead of the competition. So just learn. I mean, Joe's mentioned a mastermind. I would probably look into that if I was your, if you're listening right now, but, but Joe, look, we'll talk about, let's talk about the mastermind. Tell us about that a little bit, if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to talk about it. So my commercial real estate, um, part of my business, my life, I put together this mastermind and it's called commercial real estate investor club and a lot of it is masterminding so i'm getting out live in person uh meeting people here locally in san diego for now and we are networking we're talking about different ideas we're strategizing and you know what napoleon hell says um but for somebody in the audience that doesn't know when two minds come together they form this third mind called the mastermind and that third mind is strong and powerful and comes up with all these different ideas where you probably wouldn't have thought of. And so I love doing masterminds. The Commercial Real Estate Investor Club is a mastermind. It is a networking group. Um, there's people that actually pay me weekly for a very, very private, exclusive mastermind, uh, some of my coaching clients. And we mastermind all the time. And it's it's that third mind that's created yeah. from the group that's so so powerful so if you're not in a mastermind i highly highly encourage you to get one started right away and it doesn't matter what business you're exploring whether it's investments real estate uh accounting taxes set up a mastermind with people that would challenge you will ask you the right questions that might um you know have you think differently i mean there's there's other clubs out there i think vistage is one of them that's a pretty good club out there pretty reputable um i i'm involved with bni business networking international um there's small clubs where you wouldn't even think of it's a mastermind that it is you know i was involved very heavily once upon a time with toastmasters international and they were giving me critique and what have you and i pseudo call that a mastermind as well did you know that you can participate in class every Monday? We call it Monday Night Live, 7 p.m. Eastern, with me and dozens of other investor agents from around the country, and in fact, the world. Every Monday, totally free. No selling, no recruiting, just straight up education on anything and everything in real estate. And we have a lot of good guests coming on once or twice a month, bringing in expertise 
on subjects like how to buy a house with crypto. Okay, how about them apples? What, what about AI? How is AI affecting our business? How about the metaverse? Blockchain processing, we're already using it in title work. So, so come on to Monday Night Live, be ready to take notes and ask questions because it's live and engaging and you get to participate by asking questions and meeting others. So we'll see you there. Uh, go to Gary, real estate with Gary Wilson.com. Click on the resource tab, drop down, and you'll see Monday Night Live. And in there, you can see one of the most recent classes. But more importantly, you can register for class as many as you want going up to like the end of the year, I believe. So in any case, uh, do that. We'll see you on Monday Night Live. Look forward to meeting you in person. Take care. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, that, that famous book, Think and Grow Rich, and the, the whole concept of mastermind is, I mean, if you look back at the captains of industry 100 plus years ago, you know, Henry Ford and Edison and, and Harvey Firestone, those guys, they all met every three months in uh, near Sarasota, Florida. And for no other reason, just, just to meet and share because some it's, it, at some level, they're competitors, but also they're collaborators. And really smart business people understand the difference between um, combative competition and collaborative competition. Those who participate in collaborative competition grow much wider, much deeper, much further than those that do the combative way. The combative, it's scarcity minded. It's the difference between scarcity mindset and abundance mindset. And that's why I have no problem doing this doing this uh, podcast. I mean, I, I love helping other people. And you know, in terms of business, I've got a great a great friend and we may buy, do a business deal together because there's an element, built in element of, of trust. You know, and people who are who are, you know, scarcity minded. Unfortunately, I tend to not trust them so much. You know, you know, it's like, gosh, what are they hiding? What's their ulterior motive? You know, let's be out in the open. Everybody knows when to make a profit. Let's help each other do it. You know, but I, I tell you what, masterminds have been a big part of my success, and I've had been some free ones that I've either created or have been in, and I've had others that I've paid up to a hundred thousand dollars for. And you know, I've had one one mastermind. I think it was like a five hundred a month. Wasn't there for I don't know, six, five years. I, I forget. Six years, six years. And uh, but I probably made three to four million dollars just on what I gained for being in the mastermind and, and, and intelligence and little little pieces of information that allowed me to, to plug the holes I had, the gaps in my knowledge and understanding. And uh, not to mention make make good friends. We would go skiing together and all kinds of cool stuff. You know, racing cars. I mean, it was just a fun time. So and then of course the pandemic. Kind of put the kibosh on that, <laughs> but, uh, but 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 still, you can you can do this online. I mean, you can meet people from all over the world online, and and everybody's getting used to it. It's just a it's just the next step in the evolution of our how technology is helping what we're doing. So so I love the mastermind. I, I appreciate you sharing that. I want everybody. So guys, we'll get we'll go over this again at the end if you're listening. But commercial real estate is it investor club or investment club? Investor club. Investor club. Investor club. All right. Thank you, Joe. And then, uh, you know, look into that, guys. I mean, participate. Can they, does it matter if they're in New York or Florida or Chicago? Or does it matter if they're where they are to be in the, in the, no, no, not the at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, it's a Facebook group and that's where okay. I'm posting a lot of information. It's also on meetup.com at the moment. But yeah, I plan to uh, go all over the nation, quite frankly. And, and we're starting yeah. here very locally. We're still kind of in the incubation stage, uh, whatever you want to call it. And um, I'm just seeing if there is an interest. Do they like the content? And it seems to be working very, very well. So yeah, I do plan to start going across uh, state, across the country, whoever's interested in learning with me and uh, collaborating with me and like exactly what you said, Gary, I mean, you were right on point. Some people act from the scarcity mindset. Uh, this yeah. club is definitely sharing and caring and it's about the abundance mindset. So right now I'm opening it to anybody, everybody, and I plan to go across the country yeah. with it and maybe the world. And, and that's, let's see where, where it'll take us. Yeah, I agree hundred percent. What's really, here's what's really interesting. Statistically, this is as of a few months ago, I checked into this, 56% of all investor transactions in the United States are out of state. That means more than half of our the transactions we're working on collectively across the country are out of state from the investor themselves. They're coming down from Canada. They're, you know, they're, they're in, in Illinois, Cook County, Illinois is one of the hotbeds of investors seeking other places to invest. 
And that, that's where Chicago is, by the way. And, and you know, it's funny as people, I know people listening to how I can hear right now. Well, Gary, California is really expensive and I get it, but everything's relative. Think about the deal that Joe showed us earlier in the, in the podcast. The guy put in two million, did what he his investor brain told him to do, and three x the deal. I mean, it's just it doesn't matter where you are; it's all relative. I we we had a deal up in um uh near Long Beach. Um, what was San? San Pedro. I think of the name, but San yes. Pedro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was a uh, like one point four million. It was kind of a not so pretty little place. Um you know, maybe 12 units. And then we sold it a couple of years later for 4 million. You know? So yeah. I can tell you if the fundamentals never change, yes, the markets may be different, but the fundamentals don't change. If you understand the fundamentals, you can apply them. Hey, speaking of applying, I want to, if you don't mind, Joe, and I, we could probably talk for 10 hours, but I want to go back to the financing part because me thinking, talking about California prompted, triggered this thought that you know, there's always an answer. There's a way to solve every challenge. Financing is one of the biggies, but can you give us an example of maybe one you've done yourself personally or worked with a client to help structure a deal that, that you know, otherwise may not have happened if you, if you didn't put your creative hat on, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So right now I, I am doing a few in the commercial, for commercial lending side, and it's a matter of really getting the comps right uh, maybe getting the seller financing involved. Um, the the one that I talked about, the 17 unit in Escondido, it's, it was called shoebox accounting, where basically they didn't rent, run anything through QuickBooks. And so you got to come up with the P&Ls and, 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 and make those numbers make sense. And if they don't, um, you cannot go through the traditional institutional route. You got to get creative with the seller. And if there's enough equity like that last deal, seller was almost forced to do a seller carry back because either the buyer is going to buy cash and we're, we're going to take a major haircut on price or uh, the buyer is going to buy in terms and get creative. That's exactly what this buyer did. So no bank would have touched it because there was no history of p l to trailing 12 on quickbooks it was receipt here right receipt there let's write um hand write our receipts i mean no bank is going to touch that and that's where we are today mm -hmm. on the commercial lending side so i'm looking at some of these deals in upwards of 10 million 40 million and i'm i'm helping under underwrite these deals and man mm -hmm. if we don't have that together uh, we're going back to the seller and and let's try and create some terms to make this deal work or we're going to get some bridge yeah. funding, creative financing, whatever we need to do. But right now, I would say if anybody's going to do any deals in this market, it's going to be creative, number one, because yeah. rates are high, quote unquote, you know, back in a year or two years ago, yeah. they were in the threes. Now they're in the sevens and eights. Well, mm -hmm assumable financing take over yes. somebody's note at three percent right now and get really creative around that do a wraparound i mean there's so yeah. many that's how we're going to get deals done whether single family multifamily, commercial is the way to go is get creative right now otherwise the deal's not coming to the finish line yeah i agree 100 percent. what's really interesting when i first started investing you know i was doing small stuff you know i started off buying duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. And I had, you know, one point, I think I had, you know, 70 something units. And then I finally bought like a five unit and an 11 unit. And then I just took off from there. I bought a 90 unit. And that was, I thought, hey, I'm, I am I made it. I've got a 90. Well, entrepreneurs, we can't just sit still. So I wasn't happy sitting still in 90 units. But what was interesting is a lot of people I dealt with were very skeptical of creative financing because they came from the residential world where they're just taught from their brokers FHA, FHA, conventional, FHA, conventional. I'm like, there's a whole big world that they're not even aware of. And they would even say, you can't do that kind of stuff here. And they're like, you're, I've listened, I've taught in every single state. I've taught real estate in every state and three Canadian promises. I'm pretty sure I know what's legal, what's not legal. It absolutely is legal. And by the way, it all comes from the commercial world. All this creative stuff actually developed, was created in the commercial space. You know, we just learned how to bring it down in the residential space. It's still a struggle. You're dealing with people that 
they only believe what they're taught. They don't believe there's anything else. And but that's why that's why I, I you know, built that brokerage I built and then created the training program, how to how to work in investors. That's really what it was all about. So so just so everybody knows, I I have a belief that my agents, I want them to own real estate too. I'd only want them to help people build wealth and income. I want them to do it for themselves. Just like Zig Ziglar taught us, just helping enough other people get what they want, you will get plenty of what you want. And then I'll take it a step further and say, is this the same thing? It's even better. In other words, if what they want, what you want is real estate, then you're in a perfect scene. I mean, think about how much you and I have learned, Joe, just by working with other investors. You always learn a new trick, a new tip, a new angle. You know, is there by the way, is there something you can you can think of that you got from another investor? They really help you plug a hole or really help you launch forward. I mean, you're probably a lot of them, but anything in particular come out, come to mind? Well, that pers persistence breaks down resistance. Like my seller yeah. was no, 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 no seller financing, no seller financing. And mm -hmm. this buyer, this investor was very, very aggressive and relentless where no maybe means no today, but not tomorrow. And so I would mm -hmm. say to any investor don't take the first no as the end all be all be percent persistent be relentless and and no today doesn't mean no tomorrow this will get you a lot a lot of deals even from the broker perspective you know um yeah. as i mentioned i or maybe mentioned i'm a i've been a broker for 25 years and the investors that do the best are the ones that are extremely relentless. Even if a deal they didn't go get goes into pending under contract, they're following up with me because if that yeah. buyer that's currently pending or in escrow in un under contract backs out, can't put the financing together, well, guess who's next in line? And so, D, mm -hmm. you know, be super relentless. Don't take no for an answer. No today means maybe yes tomorrow yeah i agree 100 percent. i when i was younger i used to get bent out of shape when i didn't get what i wanted and and give up i'm like ah they, it didn't work move on to the next one and i'm a little older and wiser now thank goodness but i realized just you know what you're right it, it just that particular angle did not work on that particular day just calm down take a take a fresh breath here step back for a minute all right and then Wake up the next day and it's a brand new day. You never know what ideas will come to you. Go to a mastermind. You know, go to call call Joe. You know, you know, say, hey, I got something I want to buy it. That's why I love doing this type of thing that we're into the podcast and the masterminds, is because I feel like I've got you know hundreds of friends around the country that I can bounce ideas off. And they, when everybody somebody says, say, you know, somebody that's interested in the in the mobile home park space, I'm really trying to figure this stuff out. And now I can say, absolutely, yeah, I just just interviewed him yesterday. He's in Florida. And they're expanding across the country. I actually got a couple of those guys, but it's an awesome, awesome to everybody listening. I'm not saying you should go out and start a podcast tomorrow. I mean, I think ultimately if you build a business like Joe, you probably should. You should have a mastermind like Joe does. I mean, and we'll meet and our I have a, a team of agents across the country. We, we we call them global investor agents. But one of the things I teach them is to either join or form a local club. If you, if you don't see one you like, then create one. It doesn't cost anything. Meetup is free. You know, Facebook is free. Just start the conversation. Even if it's three people, start the conversation. You know, make it fun and 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 enrich with information and education, and it'll grow organically. And, and then you can then you can it's a business. So Joe, I, you could probably charge. I think you mentioned your your you have a another private mastermind group that people are, are paid members, but um, that's the kind of stuff that happens. But you you just start with where you are, who you are what you know and who you know. And we all want the pie in the sky, but you have to start where you are right now to be realistic. And that's why it's good to have, you know, a coach, a mentor, being a mastermind, so people can hold you to accountable to being real, being real with, you know, where you are. And it, it's you can always improve yourself. You know, you don't want to go backwards. It doesn't make sense. You can learn from the past, but you want to move forward. And the way you move forward, the way you get to your next level, is to be with people who are already at that level because your thinking is going to change. The thinking you have right now got you where you are now. You've got to change your thinking to get to the next level. So anyway, so I could spend a whole day talking about that, but I know we're getting short on time here, Joe. It, anything 
you can think of that we didn't talk about that we should mention or anything uh, like words of wisdom from your from your dad uh, or any anybody that influenced you for that matter, you know? Uh, I'll, I'll speak of another person that I truly admire and and respect a ton, um, Tony Robbins. And Tony yeah. Robbins, the secret to living is giving. And that's why you and I are here, Gary. I mean, uh, just give and give and give and give, and the world will reciprocate, whether it's a world, the universe, God, who, whatever and whoever you believe in, um, it's, it's good karma. And, and just keep throwing yeah. it out there. And, and like what you said, Gary, earlier too, you know, um, people aren't lacking resources. They're just lacking being resourceful. You know, so you start yeah. wherever you are, you know, start with the simple things that you have, start with an iPhone, whatever you need to do to start recording and, 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 and sending your vibe out there because your vibe will ultimately attract your tribe. And so just keep putting yeah. good vibes out there because the exact opposite, you put bad, bad vibes out there, you're going to get that right back, maybe even tenfold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, energy is everything. I, I, you know, I, I, I love the wisdom I gain from from growing older, and I've, you know, I, I know everybody says this eventually. It's like, man, if I knew back then what I know now, I'd be blah blah blah. But you know what? I think I think you know it's it's by design. I think God, the Creator of the universe, it's 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 by design. If we maybe we weren't ready for this kind of knowledge back then. I probably I know I wasn't. In fact, for me, I was just too young and immature and. And probably selfish too, but but it's completely reversed. And um, I tell you, life's much better when when you're a giver. Like the 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 living is in the giving, absolutely. And so, in any case, uh, I, I really want to thank you again for doing this. I appreciate this. And for everybody listening, if you're if you're listening and not watching on the screen here, it has Joe's website, and it's joemendoza.com. So J O E M E N D O Z A dot com. Phone number 619-246-HOME, H-O-M-E, okay? And just remember, Commercial Real Estate Investor Club, okay? Uh, go. It's on Facebook, so go check it out. You know, just start a conversation and see where that leads. Um, and for everybody here, Joe and all, everybody listening, um, thank you. God bless you and your families, right? And I will see you on the next Massive Passive Cash Flow Podcast. Thanks for listening to this episode of Massive Passive Cash Flow. Be sure to go to realestatewithgarywilson.com to join our community and start building wealth today.